the folks at Evolution saw some of my videos and um, they thought that their saw would be a good fit with my channel and um, they offered to send me one if I do a review of it and to use on my channel so um, I took them up on the offer and here it is it's a it's a multi-cut saw that basically will um, cut any material um, now it was shipped to me in you know the box was pretty beat up by FedEx um, it got here but all the contents inside were really extremely well packaged um, there was no damage to anything you know everything was protected well and really a great packaging job on it um, you know this is just kind of a walkthrough of everything that was in the box um, I know you could probably find a uh, hundred videos about assembling this saw online if you hunt but I just figured I'd do my own just to you know show you what I ran into while assembling it and how everything went um, now there's also a diamond blade and that's not included with the saw that's an extra option um, got a 1800 watt motor and it's a 2500 rpm saw um, and it does have a laser in it also uh, there's a list of exactly what they say it will cut and I'm soon gonna find out um, but so this is you know basically what I went through with the assembly it's really a you know a couple minute job only uh, the little lock knob there that you have to put a spacer on and screw on and then just another little handle there that slides on and then you have to slide the uh, rails in for the sliding part of it and you can see everything's really well marked and um, you know they got little red and white stickers where it goes and you know it's a really extremely smooth action with uh, basically no playing I'm amazed um, and then you have to kind of put this little locking screw in there to hold it in place while you put the head on it um, they've got some little locators there that actually um, get pushed in and they lock the head on when it goes together so you just have to make sure that you've got you can see the red dot and the white dot on there and um, just have to make sure that everything's aligned and it just kind of pushes on there and uh, you hear like a little click when it's all the way back in there and you can just double check by looking in these little holes and make sure that the pins popped out and they lock it all together um, you know you do have to put the cord on and they give you instructions to leave a uh, like about a 50 or 60 millimeter loop there play so that everything will slide smoothly and you know you have to make sure it goes over the back but you know basically there's no tools required for the assembly and um, until you get to the blade and you know the blade is a left hand thread as with any saw so um, there's a little arrow on the blade you just have to make sure you get it in the right direction and pull the guard back and um, this was about the, uh, the trickiest part of putting it together it's kind of a tight fit with the uh, the laser mounted in there and stuff so I had to fiddle with it a couple times until I finally got it to go in there and um, you know just I was afraid I might break something but it actually did slide in there tightly in the end and it does have a one inch arbor so you have to be careful what blades you use but you can can use a 5 8 arbor blade too by flipping that little adapter um, then there's a little big washer there that's got a couple flats on you just have to line that up and you know just tighten the blade up now there's a push button to lock the shaft on the other side you just push that down and you know they do supply this wrench that's for the blade and they also supply another wrench that's required now before you push that back you have to pull out that little safety thing when you're not mounted down and um, you know that's that's pretty much the main part of the saw is put together um, it did come with a nice little um, it's got some rails that go in to help support the um, whatever you're cutting and it came with a nice little stop that goes on them for repeated cuts it uh, it's just a little piece of plastic but it slides on there and when you um, you know you can put it on either side and when you want to repeat a cut you can just uh, lock it in place and um, you know use that and these little extensions just lock in with one screw there and then tighten that up. You have to make sure you crank them down pretty good and it gets solid. Um, it has a clamp that goes in either side and that just has a flat on it that 
that screw goes up against and you know that can be adjusted and um, that's the only part of the saw that you know I'm it could use a little work I think but um, there is a plug there that goes in the back for cutting metal and a vacuum adapter and then there's a bag for collecting the sawdust when you're cutting wood um, it does it doesn't really collect that much of the sawdust but it does collect some uh, and there's an extension for the other side also and you know you can see there it slides right in and um, just takes a second to put in uh, I decided to remove these stickers just to be able to set it up good because now we're getting to the setup point and they're on there pretty good um, used some pretty good glue on them and uh, you know they were a little tough to get off but there was a little residue left and uh, that's where this goo gone stuff worked pretty good so I just you know quickly put a little bit of that on there let it soak for a couple seconds and the glue came right off um, now it's time to start doing the setup of the saw and this is the um, the zero degree stop and it was off by just a hair when I checked it so I figured that I'd you know get everything set up right now before I started using it so I did get that um, back at the uh, you know the exact 90 degree to the table so um, you know it was just a matter of a just a little bit of a turn on that one bolt on that side and then um, it's a matter of setting the 45 degree stop and that was only off by a hair you can see there so there's the um, little screw on the other side that you just crank down a hair until you get it get it to stop and it's quite repeatable once you do get it set up so it, you know it's a nice saw Then you have to check the uh, square there and if that's out you have to actually adjust the fence um, but I mine was perfect so I didn't have to do it and came the surprise when I went to you know give it the first start up and I pulled the trigger there's about a like a little bit over a second delay until it starts it has a soft start speed feature so it um it really starts up nice with actually absolutely no um you know kicking or movement or anything on it it's a great it's a great startup um next thing you have to do is line up the laser and they give you this little guide to line it up with um have to make a couple cuts in it and then you know fold it on the lines and you need some pretty straight seams there so I just did it up against a uh, an old a square there let me get some you know nice folds then once you get that folded up and ready to go you just have to line that up on the uh, path of the saw there on the table and you know get that lined up real nice and then once it's aligned, just take some some tape. I just use some some of that uh, cellophane tape and tape it down so it won't move around. And I'm gonna have to say that you know aligning this laser took about the longest of anything. Um, you know, as a matter of there's a couple screws that you see there uh, to adjust it kind of side to side and um, to get the vertical tilt in it. And you have to kind of move the saw down a little bit too because it tracks. It has to track uh, straight down that line and on the uh, horizontal path so you have to tweak these two little adjustments here for side to side movement and then actually I couldn't quite get it right with those two adjustments and um, I'll show you in a second but there's a little screw underneath there that actually holds a laser that I had to um, go in and okay there it is it's pretty close but I had to go in and actually um, loosen that one screw up and just turn the laser just a hair to get everything tracking just right so that you know it was um, you know it was perfect on the line and um, yeah there's that little screw on the bottom I had to loosen that up and just tweak the laser a little bit but um, I was able to get it lined up really nice and um, decided to try and cut my first cut on a piece of just piece of walnut I had laying there uh, so I just clamped it down and you know, did the first cut. Um, it it really surprised me. It's a slow speed saw that will cut anything, and I I didn't expect that good a cut on the wood. And it turned out that actually it's I mean it's not a glue joint cabinet, you know, really smooth cut, but it is a really nice cut for um you know for a blade that will cut anything. Very little tear out or splintering or anything. Um, yeah, I'm real happy with this cut. It's going to be a 
a great saw. In the meantime, I had ordered a, uh, I found a saw stand to match it on Home Depot, so I bought one of them on my own, and um, I ordered that, and UPS pulled up just right at, you know, right at this moment when I was done assembling it, so um, I was able to put the video together. I was going to build a stand for it, but I wanted something light and portable, which, you know, would not be something that I built, so um, I decided to try their stand, and uh, it looked like it would match the saw pretty good, so, you know, I ordered that, and it came really well packaged, just like the saw. Um, everything was protected. The, uh, the finish on it was flawless. It was really nice. Um, and the sand itself was really nice, lightweight, and I didn't want something that was too big. I mean, you can get a real big miter saw stand if you want, but I wanted something smaller to, you know, be more portable and uh, be able to move around easily. So, you know, I think this fit the uh, fit the bill, and it's really easy to set up. Just a couple buttons and the legs roll up. Um, did have a couple knobs that you had to screw in. It would have been nice if they were orange to match the ones on the saw, but uh, black is nice too. So everything went together well. Um, all these screws you can see in there, there's like a little spring plate behind them to lock it so that there's no damage to any of the uh, the moving shafts when you lock them and move them around and stuff. So that's a really nice feature. So, you know, you just have that piece that slides in and out and then you have that other piece there and then there's a um a roller assembly that actually can be raised up to be a stop too so you can leave it leave it down and use a roller or you can raise it up and just use it for a repetitive stop um brackets brackets on it really uh clamped on nicely i was happy with that they they went right on with i didn't have to do any adjustments but you know, it did show where you could adjust them if you had to. Uh, and I went to put the saw on, and I never read the instructions. So uh, I found out that I should have really taken the four rubber feet off the saw to use it with a stand. So, um, you know, that was a real easy job. to Just a Phillips head screwdriver and the four of them uh, come right off. And then there's also another little block on the... Um, the bottom of that stop block there you see that has to be removed it's um when you're when you're not using it on uh, those rubber feet so that came right off and they did supply a bag of all the hardware that you needed to mount the saw also that was really nice um they two different length screws for you know you can mount different saws on here with it so that just made it a simple job to mount the saw on it and I just put the uh, the carriage bolt up from the bottom and threw a washer on. Actually, I went back later and they had some more smaller washers and lock washers in the bag that I also put on there and just uh, tightened it down, got everything lined up. So there you can see it goes really nice with the saw. I mean, it matches the finish perfect and uh, it really looks good together. Um, it's a nice sturdy stand, uh, so I figured I'd try to start doing some cutting. And... First, I grabbed a piece of aluminum that's 3x3x8 three by three by inch wall, and you can see this saw really throws chips all over. That little cone-shaped piece in the back seems to kick a lot of the chips right back out at you, so you have to be careful. And um, I'll show you later that I did wind up having to wear a safety shield with it, but I did a really nice job cutting the aluminum. And, um, you know, nice smooth cut on there. Cut it like butter. And um, I check it with the square. It was worth taking the time to set it up because everything really um, came out with a perfectly square cut on it. So I was real happy with that. And I decided to try a piece of some of that thin wall um, PVC central vacuum tubing that's a beast to cut with a uh, carbide blade. It usually cracks and shatters, but... Um, this blade just did a wonderful job on it. Really nice cut. Very few burrs and stuff like that. And then I did try, you know, a piece of eighth inch wall angle iron I had laying there. And um, same thing. It, it does kick out a lot of uh, hot little chips at you. You have to be careful, you know, wear safety equipment. But um, it cut it nice. It um, did a real nice, you know, cut it like butter. Nice job cutting it. Um, weld ready cuts there. And then I had a piece of uh, that two and a half inch heavy wall galvanized pipe that I decided to try cutting. 
Um, same thing, it cut it pretty good, but I did notice that the clamps a little bit, doesn't really clamp it that great on this, so I'm going to have to get a pair of vice grips or something and put another clamp going to the uh, fence on it, I think, to, for safety, just to be sure. So there it is, it um, cut it nice. It's, it's not quite as smooth a cut as the uh, bigger saw that I have that has a, you know, a, a one-purpose blade on it. Um, and there you can see the cut, cut from this saw. It's a, you know, it's a nice cut little bit rougher and uh, there's a cut from the other saw that's really a you know it's a specialized blade that only cuts metal so there is a little bit of a difference but not much at all then I decided you know try some thin wall tubing uh, cause I'll be cutting a lot of conduit and you know thin wall tubing like this it's, it's all steel and uh, same thing cut through it like butter um, very very little burrs on it or anything when you get it cut but lots of hot lots of hot chips coming out at you um and then just you know is the, the real nice thing about this saw is the uh, being able to do compound angles on it um which you can't really do on any other saw and um so i just decided to you know put a miter on the end of a piece of that eighth inch angle again just to to try that and see how accurate that came out and um you know the clamp the clamp could use a little extra clamping on there I think I'll, for safety in the future I'll probably use vice grips on it too but um, it does do a really uh, wonderful job at cutting it and I've been keeping the slide locked when I cut the steel it seems to you know really keep it nice and rigid and stuff and there you can see it's a you know it's a weld ready miter and it's actually accurate at 45 so the saw does do a good job then uh you know the good thing about this stand is that there you can see it takes like two seconds to pop the saw off and um you know it takes maybe about another 30 seconds to fold everything up and be able to throw it in the car and take it with you so um you know it's, it's really a, a great portable setup and this stand is just um just goes so nice with it and um it, it really fits my needs then i took it inside to kind of show you a little better the laser how that looks and this is cutting some of that uh, pool wall material that I use for the raised beds. I actually have to cut a bunch more to make a couple more of them. So I, you know, just took the saw and started cutting some slices. And um, big difference in the cut quality over using the wood cutting saw blade that I originally used. Um, very few burrs on this piece, so I won't have to do much, you know, sanding and deburring. And it's just. Um, just cuts it so smooth with no grabbing or anything it's it's so much safer than just using a high-speed miter saw on it so I just um, you know you can see there though you can't use the clamp on that one side you have to be careful so you always have to clamp the other side and then I just took um, a piece of that unistrut that I, I use a lot of that stuff and that's like 14 gauge wall steel same thing that you know cut like butter um everything's still cool when you get done cutting it and uh you know it makes it a real easy job and there you can see the cut a little bit of burr that has to be sanded off but not really that much it's a you know it's a nice thing so about the only thing that you know i'm gonna have to do is just a little work on the clamp i think um and then they did send me a diamond blade that's not usually included in the saw and i have some of these uh really highly polished um, Italian ceramic tiles I these are really tough to cut and I decided to try and cut one with that um, the ceramic is just so brittle it usually chips right off with a, a diamond blade or anything else in there it's tough to cut them and you know big part of this saw I'm going to be using it for some tiling jobs in the future and stuff so I decided to try it and um, I did lock the saw in for the first part of the cut because I you know, didn't want any shake or anything and I didn't know if it was going to grab it or what so to be safe I did but it just cut it beautiful cut it like butter um, very very little chip out on it I was really amazed um, I will try to scribe them you know for when I'm doing the real tiles but it did do a wonderful job on there and um, you know a little breakout on the back there at the end of the cut but um, this stuff is really tough to cut and you can kind of see that I did have to use this face shield for um, all the cuts that I did on it I would highly recommend that you grab one of these things if you're gonna you know use this saw for cutting any kind of metal um, 
because the steel really does get hot and kick back at you. And I saw on their website that they actually have this little magnetic uh, swarf collector. I'm going to save up and get one of them in the future to clean my clothes off before I go in the house and clean everything up. And you know, you can check out their website. They really have a lot of good information on this saw that, you know, I probably haven't covered here or anything, but they do, um, it does do a lot of different material. So I'd like to just thank Evolution for, you know, sending this saw out for me to test. And um, we will be seeing a lot more of it in the future in my videos. And you'll be seeing some real world long term testing on it, you know, on all my videos. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe.